saying the soon-to-be Homeland Security Secretary is perfect for the job because she has no life, to hanging up on the president-elect out of fear that you were being punked like that time the fake French President Sarkozy called. Our third story in the countdown, a whole plethora of political faux pas, beginning with the biggest political faux pas of the year, playing color forums with a vice presidential nominee on a party's dime. The Republican National Committee now reporting that it spent $30,000 more than previously acknowledged on Governor Palin's campaign wardrobe and accessories, which brings the grand total spent on her to $180,000, or about a grand for every electoral vote Team McCain-Palin picked up. That much money you would have thought at least one of her outfits would have glowed in the dark or flashed on and off like a Broadway marquee. And Sarah Palin is still costing Republicans, albeit indirectly, thanks in part to her failure to recognize that it was not French President Sarkozy who called her while on the campaign trail, but rather two French-Canadian radio comedians. Republican Representative Ileana ross Leighton of Florida is now particularly sensitive to prank radio calls, even when the person calling is actually the future president of the United States. I would have never thought that uh, President-elect Obama would, would call me. I'm in my congressional office in Miami. My cell phone rings. I, I get it. And it's President-elect Barack Obama. He introduces himself. He starts congratulating me for my victory. He says he wants to work with the House Foreign Affairs Committee in a bipartisan uh, manner and on and on. And I said, look, look, before you go on, let me congratulate you. You're the best Barack Obama impersonator I have heard yet. And you should really audition for the role in Saturday Night Live because the, <laughs> the guy they have there doesn't come close to matching your, your tone and your pitch. And he laughs a little bit, but he's thinking maybe she's serious. So he says, no, this really is Barack Obama. And, and I said, yeah, I get it. We get these radio station prank calls all the time. I understand it. You, you're, you're punking me. I'm a politician. It's wonderful. But really, I'm not falling for it. And he continues to talk. And boom, I hang up on him. And then a minute later, Rahm Emanuel, his uh, chief of staff designee, um, gets on the line. He says, I have President-elect Barack Obama on the line with me. Again, Obama says, Congresswoman, this really is Barack Obama. Remember that we've met. And he starts on again. And I said, look, guys, I know this bit. We play this all the time in Miami radio stations. I'm not falling for it. Have a great day. Clunk. I hang up twice. I actually took a call from the chairman of the House Committee on Foreign Affairs before Representative Ross Layton and finally accepted that she was not being punked and she spoke to Obama properly. As to why she assumed his call was a radio show prank, the day before, I had gotten a call from Hillary Clinton. But the way these calls are, they're structured, meaning Hillary calls my office. They find out what's a good time for her, what's a good time for me. And so when the call happens, it's not a surprise. But this was not a structured call. It's him calling me on my cell. Well, at least it's a decent explanation, although she's now probably going to hear from Fred Armisen from Saturday Night Live. Slightly further up the creek, Pennsylvania Governor Ed Rendell after his comments about Arizona Governor Janet Napolitano after accidentally getting caught on an open mic saying the Homeland Security designate, quote, Janet's perfect for that job because for that job you have to have no life. Janet has no family. Perfect. She can devote literally 19 to 20 hours a day to it. Governor Rendell tried to rationalize his assessment, telling a local paper, quote, what I meant is that Janet is a person who works 24-7 just like I do. She has no life, neither do I, adding, if anyone out there was offended, I apologize, but you could say the exact same thing about me. We're joined now by Chris Saliza, White House reporter for the Washington Post, author of The Fix on WashingtonPost.com. Good evening, Chris. Good evening, Keith. All right, let's start with Governor Rendell. Why, uh, why go with the non-apology apology? I, Didn't it make it kind of worse there? Yes. I always feel like, I, I feel like I've seen this enough times that I, as a, a, a sort of a good government thing, that I should warn these people. It does not, <laughs> if you do not, th are, if you are not legitimately sorry, do not apologize. Because when you say, I'm sorry if anyone was offended, that is not not saying you are sorry. So yes, I think he did make it worse. I think he felt like he had to say something because it was getting national attention. But again, if you don't, if you are not sorry, if you think the remark is taken out of context or misconstrued, don't apologize or don't sort of apologize. Yeah, I mean, the first half of that's okay. I, it's just, it's also true of me and then just move on. But don't, yeah, don't fake the apology. <laughs> right. uh, to Governor Palin and this uh, now $180,000 spent on her campaign wardrobe, it's getting to the stage where it's going to be equivalent to one of the bailouts when we get the final number here. A, how does anybody spend that much money on clothes and accessories? And B, given that they only got 173 electoral votes with that wardrobe, should GOP donors be asking for their money back or at least, you know, the resignation of, of the party's official wardrobe mistress? 
Well, let me say two things. First, Keith, I was stunned when my wife told me that there are jeans that cost more than fifty dollars. <laughs> so let's let's put that in its place. And but secondly, and we've talked about this before. What I do not understand about this is the way in which it was handled. They had to know that $150,000, $180,000 being spent on a race for a woman who was being touted as the voice of the average Joe would not look good politically. I, I just, I, I continue to be mystified as I look back on the campaign, just as I was when I was covering it, mm-hmm. how this PR situation was handled the way it was. I, 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 and I don't have an answer for you. And, uh, and Congresswoman Ross Layton, and how, how odd actually is it to have a president-elect go outside the standard system and call representative directly without kind of a, an appointment? Do we know? He's been, has he been doing a lot of this? And, and we do, Should anybody at home sort of be expecting this surprise phone call at home like it's from some sort of a radio station with a contest going? Well, you know, I, I feel her pain because in college, several friends of mine figured out a way to do three-way calling and would constantly put me on the phone with women that they thought I was interested in, and we would both pick up at the same time. So... I understand that. But, you know, I do actually think there's an important point here. The fact that he is calling, no pretense, this is the most powerful man in the world in, in you know, 40-something days, is important. I think it speaks to the fact that Obama is not just talking about post-partisanship, is not just talking about reaching across the aisle, but is making a legitimate personal effort by making phone calls to members of Congress who are on the other side of the aisle uh, to just say, thank you, congratulations on your win. You know, I want to work together with you. I think that is important. The fact that he is doing that, the fact that he is not doing it through handlers, that he's doing it himself, speaks to that he's not just saying it, he's doing it. Plus, as the Congresswoman suggested, there are very few good Obama impersonators that, yet. And uh, if they're out there already, they have the many, many more things to do to make much more money. Th- there's money to <laughs> be made. Exactly. <laughs> there's several shows need one right now. Uh, Chris Saliza, White House reporter for The Washington Post. As always, Chris, thanks for your time tonight. Thank you, Keith.